Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English summary, just translation of the Majlis of the Hazar Mawlana Qamarul Zaman Sahib Damad Barakatuhum, which took place on Saturday, the 28th of Rajab 1442, corresponding with the English date, 13th of March 2021. Hazar Wala Damad Barakatuhum quotes the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Muslim, Man Salim Al Muslimun Bil Lisanihi Wayadi. A Muslim is the one from whom Muslims are safe from his tongue, the evil of his tongue and hands. This kitab that I have in front of me, Hazrat Wala Damat Barakatuhum says, in it is the Malfuzat and the Golden Sayings of Hazrat Tanwi. The name of the kitab is Aghlatul Khawas Wal Awam. It is a wonderful kitab. Many years ago, I had a chance to read it. In fact, I've got it written here on the cover. Qabil Mutala Qamur Zaman. That it is worthy, it deserves that this kitab should be studied and read. From it, this kitab, I am quoting. Azatami Rahmatullah says, or under the topic, he says, that such sins or deficiencies in which the religious and the common people are involved and engaged in illa mashallah except those whom Allah Ta'ala has protected. The first thing or the first point that Hazrat Wala discusses here and says that not to harm or rather to harm or to hurt the heart of a person is haram. This hadith that I quoted to you Al Muslimu Man Salim Al Muslimuna, it is one of the foundation, one of the fundamental ahadith of Islam. Al Muslimu Man Salim Al Muslimuna Mil Lisanihi Wayadi. A very important hadith. A Muslim is that person whom other Muslims are safe from the evil of his tongue and his hands. The hadith is common, it is famous. Many of us even know it, but very few practice upon it. The second point, after mentioning that it is haram to cause harm and give taklif to the heart of a person, the second point which is mentioned is to make someone's heart happy, that is ibadat. Imam Ghazali has written from the etiquettes of Dawud, in fact, I have written that Dawud actually means Dawud is very, very uh, broad and general, but here Dawud is actually meant the invitation to a meal. What is the niyat that a person should make? One is to please the heart of the believers, to make them happy. It is from the goals and objectives of feeding people, even if you just give tea to people. Imam Ghazali continues to say and he says, Watani Sukulubil Ikhwan and to make the hearts of friends acquainted. Don't you when you call a person and you say, Sir, let's have a cup of tea or join me for a meal, and don't you see the person starts becoming close and he starts talking? And the third one, what the sunnun, the sunnitin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to understand it, this feeding. To understand it to be a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people make mazammat and talk about the evils. That this is wrong when we invite people and this is wrong, this is wrong, fair enough. But how many of us speak about these three intentions that a person should make when feeding people? I mean, look at a simple basic thing like salam and musafaha, the handshake. I mean, the virtues of it are so tremendous. Sins fall away from the account of a person like how dry leaves fall from a branch of a tree. Allahu Akbar. In Medina Munawwara, they were on the outlying areas where the Sahaba would go after being attacked and after being raided and the orchards had been burned. Sahaba went out, the armies went out. They went to this area, that area, the other area. And somebody asked, but how come does the army not come to this particular place? An old man inquired and it was said, it was inquired and an old man gave an answer. He says that on one occasion, Rasulullah came here and drank water. 
Therefore, out of adab and taking that into consideration, the Sahaba don't come here. Allahu Akbar. To sit in between two people is against good etiquette. It's giving taklif. Two people are sitting, you come and you sit in between them. How can we do that? Three people are together for two to stand up and start talking something that's totally incorrect because the third person doubt and suspicion comes in the heart. They're hiding something from me. Al-Muslim. Man salim al-Muslimoon min lisanihi wa yadi. The Muslim is the one who other Muslims are safe from the evil of his tongue and his hand. So, to harm or to hurt the heart of a person is haram and to bring happiness to the heart of a person is ibadat. You know, sometimes uh, we, may, we, we, we don't make an intention uh, and what do we say after that? Uh, no, unintentionally I done this and uninten uh, it, it wasn't on purpose that I done this or that or the other. But when we stood up or from the start, have we made an intention in our hearts that I am going to try not to harm anyone with my tongue and with my hands? This is the highest maqam. In fact, upon this very note, Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullahi has written a nukta, a very subtle, beautiful, deep point. I mean, the dua teaches us, Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa ta'na and we understand that unintentional, that is forgiven. Then how come after that, I mean, if we forget and unintentionally we do something, we would not be taken to task for that. But why then too? The dua states, and we are making this dua, that O Allah, la tu'akhidna in nasina wa waqta'na, that do not take us to task. If we forget, or if we err, how come? Because many times, many things, are done through negligence and sometimes those things out of being careless and negligent a person is taken to task for it therefore over and above that we should still make the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah do not take us to task because many things happens in this way in this particular way one person came and he sat immediately behind Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullahi Hazrat Tanwi stood up turned around, came behind him and sat directly behind him. Now this is what used to happen there and how things used to go on there. And he said that, Hazrat, I'm feeling uncomfortable. You're sitting right behind me. He says, exactly. I just wanted you to understand how I was feeling. One is intentionally we cause harm to someone. That's absolutely bad. Unwanted, but even unintentionally. You know, the Ahlullah would not even allow, which we would call a so-called enemy or person who's ghayr or a person who's far. They would not even tolerate that harm comes to them. Today, our own friends, our own family are not safe from the harm of our tongue and our hands. You must have heard the couplets that I've heard about the Ahlullah that their enemies, they would not even hurt the hearts of their enemies. How would you ever, or how would it be easy for you to reach this maqam in this stage when your, your friends are not safe from your evil? You know, this is actually the spirit and the ruh of the whole kitab of Gulista. You know, Hazrat Tanwi was giving a talk and uh, there was an incident that he quoted about some person. Coincidentally, it happened. I mean, it, it wasn't meaning that the person done this or that, of course, without mentioning his name. That's obvious. And that person happened to be there. Hazrat Anwil Saab came to know about it and he said, this person may have been inconvenienced when he must have heard about this, even though I had said it most uh, commonly and generally. And he goes to him and asks him for forgiveness. A similar type of incident, uh, incident takes place with Hazrat Muhammad Shah and he says, quoting, 
And he says, sometimes we even find people don't even pray and read Salat on the day of Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha, Bakra Eid. And then afterwards he comes to find out that that very same individual, he is sitting there. And then he comes to him and he says, that I didn't know that you were here. Forgive me for that. What about Hatim Asam? Some lady came to him, completely strange. He did not know her. She did not know him. And uh, unfortunately, she passed wind. She passed wind. And it was an embarrassing moment. But look at this. How wonderful these great personalities were. He pretends, rather, he made it such that his entire life he pretended to be deaf to protect the heart of that woman and her feelings. And then she comes to talk when she says exactly what she wants or this or that. She says, I can't hear you. Can you speak up? I'm hard of hearing. I'm a bit deaf. Can you speak up? What are you saying? Gee, come again. Now these are our Akabirin. People speak and say such unsavory things towards Hazrat Misa. But these were their teachings. This was their Talim. On one occasion, somebody gave a Buzruk, a saintly person, an invitation. And he came and he ate. And what was served was Kheer. It was love. How, how do we understand Kheer? To be lovely, uh, sweet, uh, you enjoy it, it's you indulge. So time goes on and he asks for more and he asks for more, so much so that the entire food is depleted. And then he says, isn't there some in the pot? Can't you bring the pot here? And the pot is brought from the kitchen and he starts putting his finger in the pot and eating it. He's done. And after some time, the host was taking his finger and he put it into the pot and he tasted and to his astonishment, he realized it was absolutely bitter and unpalatable. How did this saint and Buzruk eat it? And he came to know that instead of putting sugar in the kheer, salt was put in. And they saying, but Hazrat, how did you eat this? By mistake, we put salt. Oh, did you put salt? You know what? I actually, That's why I enjoyed it so much. Because I always... I don't like it sweet. I actually like it like this. That's why I enjoyed it so much. Now he tolerated so much just to keep intact the feelings and the heart of the host. He himself underwent so much of difficulty. So listen to this carefully. After Kufar and disbelief, the greatest sin that a man can commit and perpetrate is giving inconvenience or difficulty to the heart of the next person. This is the Malfuz and Golden Statement of Mujaddid Al-Faitani Rahmatullahi. And what we say, we turn it around, Ahman, come on, you can't be so sensitive, now he's feeling bad about this. We make the mistake, we do this and we do that and all of this is a whole lot of excuses. We give that leaf and then we say, oh make me maaf. What does the Quran say? The Quran says, أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُ Does one of you love or like that he eats the dead flesh of his brother? فَكَرِهْتُمُ Most definitely you would dislike it. Like how you would dislike to eat the flesh of a human and then your own Muslim brother? Is this something absolutely Detestable. Nobody would do that. But that's how detestable Allah is trying to impress on our minds and our hearts. Ghibat and backbiting. Listen to this incident. Once Hazrat Tanwi sir, and his wife Pirani Sahiba were together and she was saying something regarding another person. Coincidentally it happens that that person there is passing by. And he says to him, hey listen one minute. You know my wife is saying this. And she was absolutely angry and she felt disgraced. She said she was upset and she says, you disgraced me. And he said, how? Impossible. 
I wanted to try and save the two of us from bad biting and I wanted to clear the air as well. Now this was the mu'amala and the dealings of Hakimul Ummah, Mujaddidul Millah. That practically all these things were shown to the Ummah that this is how we would love Islam. Hazrat Tami got married for a second time and someone came and said, Hazrat, what's this new custom that you brought about and started? He said, no, rather, I brought an end to it. He would always have in front of him a scale with two pans. And every time anything would come, he would start measuring it. So much for the younger wife, so much for the older wife. One scale, one pan, so much. So much that people saw how difficult it was. He said that I done this and people would understand that we, we have so much of justice to understand the rights of both the wives that I actually closed this particular door. So these are the marfuzat of Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah This is the life that he lived. We say that we are Tanwi. Are we following the akhlaq? Are we following the dealings? Are we saying such things just like that and not even thinking and pondering? When we make promises, are we fulfilling it? He stayed with so much of shan and honor. He was always, his tawakkul was on Allah and he was absolutely content. Did we even know that such a great peer, Mujaddid, that he would be in such type of financial difficulty that at times that he would even take his wife's jewelry on loan and then he would sell it and then he would fulfill here and fulfill there and when he would come back it would be returned to her. A person came to Hazrat Tanri and he said that here's five rupees. Uh, you know what? If you need it in the madrasa, use it for the madrasa and if you are in need yourself then you may use it for yourself. He takes it and then his mind and thoughts are scattered. He thinks for a moment, hey, you know what, the madrasa needs this money. And then he wants to give it there. And then he says, you know what, myself, I don't even have a penny. Maybe I should use it for myself. No, 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 no. But let me use it for the madrasa. When he realizes this, he says that this gift that has been given is Mujibeta Shwish, Wapas. This gift has brought about confusion. And has made me, my thoughts all upside down. I don't know this. I don't know that. Must it be for this or must it? My, my mind is scattered. My thoughts are now scattered. It was a, a, a cause of all of this here. I would rather return it. If it is in my kismet, Molly was you Allah. Molly was you Allah. If it is in my kismet, it will come to me. Sometimes Hadiya used to come. Gifts used to succumb, but it used to come against the grain of his principle. So he would return it. And then he would say, Mori Usulullah, if this is written for me, it will come to me according to my usul. And then it would come, and then he would call him Mori Usulullah, see here, the seer came. You know, people speak so much about the firmness and the rules of Hazrat Anwi, his tashaddud, but nobody speaks about his talaktuf, his love, his compassion, his coordination, his putting things together. Nobody speaks about that. You know, for Taweez, Hazrat Tanwi used to dedicate some time for it. Now people would say, look at his usur, look at his principles are like this and like that. But look at the reality. He used to say himself, I have designated this particular time so that I make myself pardoned. That if anybody comes in this time, I would leave whatever work I'm doing and I would give the person their tawis. People come from far and wide. If they come all that way and I don't give them that tawis, won't there be difficulty for them? Now that, that, that was the hard and fast, the general rule. But what was the exception to the rule? And there was no dedicated time for this. A woman at any time would go into labor. It is a time of difficulty and panic. Oh, okay, now what are we going to do? She's struggling, this, that, and that other. The person comes in the panic. But what's the time? It's 12, 1 in the morning. But the Khadims were told that you ask. And when this type of an answer is given, my wife is experiencing 
labor pains. I need help. Can't Hazrat write a taweez? So it would become easy for her by the hukam and the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his great names. So then, he would wake up at that odd hour of the night. He would carry out wudu and ablution. And then he would write it so meticulously. So, I mean, that's the words. Now it comes to my mind. People have taken the, the zabta, the rules of Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullahi, but they haven't took his rabta, how he linked things together, how he saw the occasion, how he bent his rules, how he said, at this point in time, there's no rule. People didn't look at that part. People do, didn't look at his latafat and the delicate, his delicate nature, his wisdom, his kindness, his affection. Hazrat Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say, people look at Hazrat, he's walking days to look at the way he sits, the way he does this. Someone's attention was on that. Someone's attention was on this. But my attention was solely on his heart. And my dua was, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, you give me that wealth which, in the, which is in the bosom of my Shaykh Hazrat Tanwi. On one occasion, as a Shah Sula Saab came here and the masjid that's here in front of my house, he was standing there. And then he started saying, Kamru Zaman, this plot is for you. Uh, and uh, we will build it. He never lived to see this structure coming up. But his dua was with me. There was no way whatsoever, I can say, but Allah Ta'ala built it. E khuda, jo diya, diya tu ne. Whatever was given, whatever I have received, it was from you only and only, nothing from my side. And it was the barakat of Hazrat and his dua. This is for Anwar Sahib, this is for Jami Sahib, this is for Moli Isa, this is for Nurullah, and people built, somebody built, somebody sold, Moli Ammar Sahib even extended his, and Allah Ta'ala had given us so much. Besides whatever Hazrat gave us, he gave us. He even gave us this house. Otherwise today, where would we have been? I make dua that even the thawab of this majlis be sent to the soul of Hazrat Shah Wasiullah Sahib. Let's make dua. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Oh Allah, out of your grace and mercy, give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of keeping the talimat and the dealings and the mu'asharat and every aspect of our Buzragani deen in front of us, give us a tawfiq and he died of being firm on it, practice on it, and what ta'aleem that I am giving you people, oh Allah, you make it such that these elders are also pleased at what I am passing on to the people. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بحرمة سيد النبي الكريم لا إله إلا الله